diesel fuel is dirty. And no, I'm not just talking about the pump handle. I'm talking about the stuff that's in your fuel that you can't see. That's the stuff that's killing modern diesel engines. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek. Let's go visit my friend, Matt Graham at Donaldson to get the facts about diesel fuel cleanliness and how it impacts engine life. And just like that, we're here at Donaldson. Matt, why don't you explain to everybody what this is and why it matters in terms of fuel cleanliness. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lake. So what we're standing in front of here is a multi-task bench. And what we're able to do is be able to test a filter for how well it removes particulate at different sizes. So you can how see- How do you know that? that? Well, we got different sensoring applications on here, so we can actually count and take a look at the amount of particles that are in that fluid circuit. And we can look at it from over 16 different channels, looking from four microns all the way up to 50 microns to be able to see what level of particulate or how many of those particulates we remove from that fluid stream. And you're doing that with a upstream counter and a downstream counter, correct? That's correct. So there is a unified test dust that we inject into the system. So we're it's knowing- It's really special, it, right? The it's test absolutely. Dust. You wouldn't believe it or wouldn't think about it, but there is test dust that everybody uses that is the exact same dust. And it's calibrated to specific levels. So yeah. everybody- Calibrated uses. dust. Okay. How crazy is that? <laughs> exactly. So we're injecting a certain amount of that dust into this circuit. We're counting it before it gets to the filter. We run that fluid through the filter and then we count that dust again to see what is left within that fluid. And there from there, we can rate how good this filter is at a certain particle size. This is my dad's 2002 Ram with a Cummins diesel. We use it to go vintage kart racing around the country. So this topic is more than just a curiosity for me. Because the test dust actually has a distribution of particle sizes intentionally. Correct, it has a known distribution of big to small particles and everywhere in between. So you can kind of see how well this filter is actually filtering at certain particle sizes. Correct, and it could be a wide range. It could be this filter is really good at removing you know, 10 micron particles, but maybe not so good at four micron particles. And then it's really good at 25. And the information that we'll see from this test will be able to show you on that scale what particle size it's good at removing. And why is that important for diesel fuel and especially with the issues with fuel pumps and injectors these days? Great question. So when it comes to the efficiency, so if this filter, if we're worried about four micron particle sizes, damaging injectors and pumps and that within a system, mm -hmm. we can know exactly how well this is going to remove those four micron particles so they don't make it to that fuel system and cause issues. Because there's a pretty big difference, right, between what is the acceptable level of cleanliness by the ASTM fuel spec and what's actually kind of called for by the manufacturers of fuel pumps and fuel injectors. Absolutely, that fuel standard, that ASTM fuel standard, from a level of water or particulate or dirt that's within that system, that hasn't changed in 40, 50 years plus. It's the same level. And actually it's about a thousand times dirtier or more than what is actually needed and recommended from a cleanliness level. A thousand? A thousand times dirtier. So if you can imagine a thousand times more dirt, that is the level that's deemed in spec fuel versus how clean that fuel actually needs to be by the time it hits that injector for those manufacturers of those fuel components, whether it be injectors or pumps, anything within that circuit. Wow, that seems like it's, that's too big to be true. It's hard to kind of comprehend of, well, that fuel is that dirty, but yet we need things that are that clean. They can't be that far apart. But the truth is our fuel infrastructure is really made from something that's 50 years ago and everything was planned and we've moved away from that. That engine's gotten increasingly tighter tolerances, but our fuel standards are still unfortunately kind of in this archaic system. And so we have to rely on filters to be able to bridge that gap between what is the in spec and then what is actually needed from that piece of equipment. So this variance in cleanliness compared to the ASTM standard and what the engine actually needs got me wondering. So we took four random samples from just local stations here and sent them off for particle count testing. And the results matched up with what Matt's talking about. We had two samples that are right around 1,500 parts per million 
greater than four microns, those clearance size particles. But one of those samples came back over 15,000 parts per million greater than four microns. So it shows there really is a giant difference in diesel fuel cleanliness in the market. Because the older style diesel engines use a, a kind of pintle style injector, fairly large, and it was pretty tolerant. But it has wider clearances, so it could allow really small stuff to go through it without doing any damage. But now we're talking about piezoelectric injectors also operating at much, much higher pressures. So your clearances have gotten tighter and your pressures have gotten higher and that's what's kind of forced this issue, right? You're absolutely right. The higher the pressure, the tighter the tolerance is, right? So your older series systems, three, maybe 5,000 PSI was about as max you get. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tight tolerance, but it was acceptable and could actually move some of that through. Today's tolerances, we're talking two to five microns, about the size of red blood cells that will actually go through there and score wow. injectors, cause damage to pumps. So those are the types of particles that we're worried about removing yesterday in those previous fuel systems those that pass through and not really make much of a difference but today with those tight tolerances we've got to remove all that otherwise you're going to end up seeing downtime so literally to put some numbers on the spec the fuel spec in terms of cleanliness in terms of like the total number of particles per like liter of fuel it's like 1.9 billion just over a billion particles per a liter of fuel is what's within spec, within according spec. to that spec. But by the time that fuel meets that injector, yes, the manufacturer of those injectors say that it needs to be down to a level of 30,000 particles per a liter of fuel. So from over a billion down to 30,000 is a tremendous amount of material that we've got to actually remove from that to be able to make sure that it's safe to be that able seems to. like it's impossible so it, fuel really isn't that dirty regularly is it it's not typically up at that billions of particles level is pretty atypical that's just the upper limit of that threshold of where so that can normal? be normal is usually somewhere around about three million particles or so per per liter of okay. fuel of, of of what that's going to be but that's, you're still going to go from three million particles down to thirty thousand. So correct the filters in the vehicle have to do that job. Yeah, we're dispensing right out of a tank, whatever we're going into, into your piece of equipment. The We've got your onboard engine filters, mm -hmm. and those are got a task with removing all that, taking that three million to 30,000. There's a lot of work that has to be done there to be able to remove that. And that goes back to that efficiency. How good is it at removing those filters? And that's what we can test and be able to make sure that that filter's up to the task of removing those particles. Because you have to design the filter media to be able to target those particles and still maintain enough flow. Because if you just had this like incredibly tight wire screen that could filter down to that red blood cell, it would probably fill up quickly, right? Yeah, something I tell folks a lot is, all right, if you were gonna make a filter that was 100% efficient, it'd be a wall and nothing's gonna be able to move through it. <laughs> so we've gotta sacrifice a little bit in order to get flow to come through. Mm -hmm. There's different ways of design a filter to be able to allow flow versus what you're removing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you've gotta give up a little bit to be able to flow and depending on how efficient you're gonna be, you may have less flow to that Then you've gotta design for size and there's a bunch of other things that go into that as well. All right, but at the end of the day, wherever you come up with to test, you've gotta be able to measure what you're doing and. This is an ancient test bed, right? This is like one of the first ones. So you guys have been doing this for over a hundred years and yeah. this thing's seen probably everything. Yeah, I mean, I, from what I can understand, I mean, and this has seen everything that you can think of from a fluid flow standpoint, every type of circuit, design, pressure, type of fluid, uh, what the actual end application from you can test. I mean, as long as it's a liquid filter, you're gonna be able to apply those same premises regardless of where that filter actually ends up being used. Okay, Matt, so do you have any real world examples of how just making the fuel cleaner actually makes a difference in terms of engine longevity? Yeah, absolutely. Probably one of my favorite examples is we had a uh, concrete company. They ran a pretty big fleet of trucks. They actually controlled their own fuel sources, so they had fuel on site. But when they reached out to us, they were having some really big issues. About every three weeks, they were having a truck that had an injector issue. Oh, wow. That equated to a little over a quarter million dollars a year kind of out the window in downtime and labor costs and part replacement costs. You know, pretty big issue there. Yeah, I get your attention. Yeah, so, and also at the same time, they would have fuel-related issues about three times a week over the course of their fleet. 
So that could be a fuel filter that prematurely plugged. It could be, you know, a water sensor that goes off because there's water in the fuel. Kind of anything that's maybe not injector related, but yeah. pretty frequent. Uh, that cost them, they totaled up uh, around $80,000 a year is what they were seeing in them. Okay. So pretty significant cost over the course of right. the year. So they reached out to us, hey, what can we do, right? Well, you got a couple choices. One is you could completely re-engineer the fuel system that's on that engine. Okay, probably not happening. Redo all the filters on there and redesign all that. Probably not also not a great option. Uh, what we ended up proposing and what they moved forward with is we actually took bulk filter, uh, the filters at their bulk fuel tanks mm -hmm. and redesigned that. So instead of having our 30 micron nominal or say 50% efficient filter right. for that, uh, what we ended up putting on the outlet of those tanks was four micron, 99.95% efficient. Woo. So what the other way I like to think about that, if there were 2000 particles upstream, you're only having one particle still downstream. There you go. So it's removing almost all of that dirt that's possible from going on a piece of equipment. As a result, the next year that was following, we had zero injector failures over the course of that 12 months. We also had no downtime due to fuel, fil fuel filter issues on site. Wow. So that intent, that cost that was a sunk cost for them occurring year over year, by putting some focus on the filters on that bulk tank and doing that heavy lifting before it gets onto the piece of equipment really saved them a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy over the course of that year. And they're still using our products today on all of their tanks. That was about five or six years ago. Wow, so there's your concrete example, sorry, I couldn't help it, <laughs> of how well fuel filtration works when you do it correctly. Big savings, big advantages by taking a pretty small step, actually. Yeah, it's not a whole lot of incurred costs. It's really simple to actually add. Wherever your pump is, you add filtration downstream of it, and you're just catching that stuff before it makes it out the way of the dispenser. So we know that the fuel at the pump is actually dirtier than the engine can tolerate. So what's the best thing they can do to make sure that the fuel that's actually getting to that injector is clean? I know like say top tier, there's a new spec coming out, calling out better cleanliness, like mm -hmm. less water contamination, all those kind of things. But so what can the average person do to protect themselves from this giant chasm of specs? It's tough if it's something that you're gonna be filling up over the road retail fueling applications. Okay. You're kind of at the mercy of whatever kind of filter is installed on that dispensing equipment. So that, that is kind of tough. But if you are fortunate enough to actually own your own tank, you know, say an agriculture space, mm -hmm. or folks that, you know, have their own fuel and have their own kind of dispensing equipment, you can engineer that system to deliver you that, I should say, inspect for tier four systems okay. to get that fuel to that level. So you're not relying on those onboard engine filters to do all of that work. say in that case is make sure that that onboard engine filter is meeting that efficiency level that it was originally intended to. Always put a lot of time and effort into tailoring that filter mm -hmm. to best protect that circuit that's there. A lot of times we see diversions from that, maybe a little bit more open because it's clogging faster than they'd like. And that's kind of a knee-jerk reaction. If you do that, yeah, it might not clog as much, but you're letting a lot more dirt downstream, right? So sticking with whatever that recommendation is from that original equipment filter that was on there, mm -hmm. making sure that we're meeting the same micron level as well as the same efficiency level to provide that cleanliness downstream that that engine was designed for. And you're talking about having an efficiency level at that micron level because there can be a lot of confusion in the marketplace based on just micron rating or efficiency alone? That's a very good point. There's micron and efficiency rating, and one without the other is kind of useless, in all honesty. If you have the efficiency, hey, this is 90% efficient at what, right? So you yeah. also need the micron level. On the flip side of that, if you say, hey, this is a 10 micron filter, how good is it at it? It could be remove one out of 10 million 10 micron particles. Man, that's not very good. Right? But you can still say it's a 10 micron filter you because can it removes still, something. You're absolutely right. There's wide open kind of space with how you report those. This machine gives us exactly how good it is at each micron level, but you can pick anywhere on that. You can say this is 10 micron, but I could also call it a four micron filter, but it just has a different efficiency. So you want that high efficiency at the low micron. That's what's gonna give you the best filter performance. Absolutely. Downstream cleanliness is directly correlated to the lower the particle size and the higher the efficiency rating is.
there you go. So that was really great information. And now I know what to tell dad because he's been considering trading this in to get a new truck with a modern diesel engine. Well, now we know that you gotta pay attention. Top tier fuel, OEM quality filters changed out on the recommended basis. Not too soon, not too late. That's how you keep that modern diesel running properly because that diesel fuel is dirtier than you think. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.